Hello everyone, welcome to Art Success with me, Adelaide Damara. I am currently here in the studio of the fantastic Laura Hudson, who has been a full-time artist for the last four years, but don't let that fool you. She actually qualified as an artist in 1989 and went on to do experimental film and from there also a lot of curating work I and mean, she's got some fantastic things to say about her journey in the art world so let's get into it. Could you tell me a bit about your background please? Okay I studied uh, fine art environmental art in Glasgow, Glasgow yeah. School of Art uh, and I graduated in 1989 and then I went down to London and studied film video at some Central Sun Mountain. For after graduating you didn't go straight into art did you? you took a... No I um, in my last year at Art College, I started um, curating a film festival. So it's quite a large film festival, last a month, with a three month lead up of international women's film. So that's uh, the major thing that I was doing in my final year. I should have been doing my own work, but I really wanted to do this festival, particularly because while I was at, at, at our college, we were told in no uncertain terms that the reason women weren't in the annals of art history. Uh, the uh, art history books and uh, the canon of art history it was because they weren't good enough. And as a 17 year old, I kind of believed that. And then I started seeing some work and I went to see um, a program of films by Maya Doren. And I was just blown away by how amazing they were. They were made in the 1940s. And I thought, well, if that work is there, there's other work and why am I not seeing it? First of all, I was like very happy to have seen the work and then I just got really angry because I just thought, okay, this is actually systematic. This is deliberate. So I just thought, well, I have to, I want to, act, you know, I need a context for my, myself and my work. I, want, I, I actually want to see this work. So the only way to see it was to actually curate it, get it into Glasgow. So that's, that's why I wanted to do the film festival and continued organising things. So when I came to London, I. Um, it became part of a collective. Well, we, we actually set it up called Exploding Cinema. I don't know if you know it. No. It, it wasn't particularly to do with women's work. It was, but it was, it was like a no holds barred. You make a film, you bring it. We put the film shows on in pubs and places like that, and it was just like it was like an open mic for poetry, but um, for film. So anybody could just bring a film, and they were shown. Fantastic. And it was, it was pretty sort of funky little. Thing and they, they've been going for 20 odd years now. So bringing it up to date with your, your current practice, previously you dealt with the whole issue of women in art by um, curating and putting on the film festival and then yeah. continuing to curate women's art. How do yeah. you um, navigate the patriarchal art world that we're in as a woman now? How do you navigate that space? Well, currently I don't really navigate it because I'm very new to my practice I guess because I, I kind of left it behind slowly but surely I stopped making my own work because I was spending all my time curating and um, organizing events and distributing women's films and stuff and um, so now I, I, I kind of am just teaching my re -te reconnecting with my practice and teaching myself painting because um, my practice when I was a student and just for the few years after when I was still practicing and showing work it was an experimental film shown in um, in the street basically I used to project onto buildings or in spare spaces, different things. Now my practice is, is shifting right around and going back towards fine art, having come from a more radical background. Yes. It's going towards more traditional, but at the same time I'm looking, I'm bringing with me all that history and all that knowledge of uh, experimental film and performance and installation and really looking at fine art for, with that as my kind of heritage in, in a sense. So I'm interested in where those practices kind of connect. So the sculpture I just made, it's um, a time-based sculpture and there's three elements to it, a container, sand and time. And the time element is how long it takes for the sand to run through. There's one finite amount of sand and it runs through out of the sculpture onto the floor. And that's, this is the timepiece that you put into the show at Plymouth, is it Plymouth? Yes, yeah. it was in the Flameworks process show. Okay, it, was it Plymouth or Bath? Uh, it's, it's, it was in uh, Plymouth and it's going to be in Bath in June. It's called Fab, Fringe Arts Bath. Okay. So, yeah. So, if anyone wants to see it, that's from what day? 27th of May till quite far into June, I think. So, there's loads and loads of events right across the whole of Bath. Okay. And it's going to be in a, a show called Time Frame. And how did you get into that show? Uh, there was a call out for um, the way that they're organised. It's quite an interesting way. There's lots and lots of different uh, small groups of people that have got together and said, right, we're going to put a show on in this building, like l loads of spare buildings that they've found or spaces. So there's quite a few curators have got, have, 
uh, put a call out very specifically to, about a theme or a particular area of interest and this particular one is, is called Time Frame and it's about time. So I wanted to submit to that particular show because I wanted to be in that context. Are you represented at the moment? Uh, no, I'm very early in my practice, particularly um, with painting. So I don't really know, I don't, I don't know how to navigate that, that area particularly and I, don't, I feel it's too soon for me to actually look for representation. Yeah. But you are managing to sell your work by yourself? Yes, independently. It's, um, yeah, I seem to be, it's been really good. Um, I've just got a piece that I'm wrapping up today to send. It's, it's actually going back to Devon. It's, it was painted in Devon and somebody um, contacted me through my website asking if they could buy it. And they bought work before of mine and from a different, an earlier series and they wanted to buy one from this series. So they kind of knew the work already, but, so they won't actually see that painting until it arrives. Yes. But what I did was, that what, one of the reasons I've got all these pictures on the wall is I, I put a few together on the wall and photographed them and sent, sent a picture so they got an idea of what they felt like. It's like an isolated, cut down image of the picture. You haven't got a sense of scale. True. Or the colours necessarily, how accurate they are, True. particularly in a digital setup. So I thought if I photographed a bunch of them, they would, they would get more of an idea, feel of the piece. Very good. Uh, it's really important to have a very well optimised functioning website so that people can actually see your work and get in contact with you. I think so. I've sold quite a lot of work through people just seeing it on my website mm. and then contacting me. I, I got my first solo show by having had some work in a, collect, a group show and people saw that and then they looked me up and saw that there was a whole body Yes. and they offered me a solo show. So it's really important to have your work kind of curated. Yes. On your, on your site. Do you remember the first time you sold a painting and how that felt? Yeah, it was, it was quite random and it was, it was lovely. It was, I was a, on a man, living on a mountainside in France and somebody saw it on my website and said, I'd really like to buy that, can I buy it? <laughs> and I hadn't even thought about, uh, could anybody buy anything? Because we were on a mountain, there's no people. So yeah, it was really lovely. It was really nice. And you said you sold stuff through Saatchi as well? Yes, I put um, some paintings on Sarch, it used to be called Sarch Online, I think it might have changed its name recently. But yeah, and it's free, free to put on, they take a 30% commission. Um, the whole buying process seems to be quite easy. It's quite guaranteed in the sense, and they, they send you very particular shipping instructions. So the last piece I sold went to New York, and the ship, it was absolutely m packed madly, but it, I followed all the instructions to make sure it was packed. And when it left the studio, the courier, they organised the courier to come and pick it up. They, they, they take the money from mm. the buyer, they give you the instructions to package it, they send the courier to pick it up when, when you've packaged it. When the buyer receives it and are, are happy with it, then they release the money to you. That's very good. What would you say is your, has been your biggest challenge to date as a professional full-time artist and how have you managed to overcome that challenge? Finding good space to work. Um, I think we were incredibly lucky to just uh, have contacted second floor studios when there was a space available because mm. I think it's quite full a lot of the time so we were really lucky because uh, it's that's one of the hardest things to find a stable space within, within a community of artists. I mean here there's 450 artists so that's, yeah. that's quite fantastic. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say has been your biggest su success to date as um, an artist? And deciding to jump both feet in selling our house, saying, okay, you've only got one life, what would you regret having not spent it doing? And it was being an artist. I mean, that's what I wanted to do since I was 11, so not doing it would have been, yeah. I really would have regretted it. Basically, you, you were able to make that decision because you had the, the, the cushion, I guess, of the, of the funds from the sale of the house. Yeah. 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 That's really important. So we've sort of bought ourselves time, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to make it work. Because yeah. I, I want to paint to the until they drop. <laughs> Dive a paintbrush in hand. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you say was your personal definition of success in the art world? Um, making work that is truthful to you and how you feel, how you think in the world and how you relate to other people. I think it's, as long as it's truthful. By your definition, would you consider yourself to be successful? I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to be truthful to yourself at all times about some of the ugly things in life. It can be hard. And sometimes once you open your eyes to some things, it can be quite hard because it can make you angry. Mm. So I try to sort of use that anger and channel it into something positive. But somebody once said to me, your paintings are too pretty for the subject. But I was doing work about um, nuclear waste. 
I thought that's really interesting because I actually want them to be beautiful. I want to make something that is actually aesthetically beautiful, that kind of draws you in and then makes you question. That's quite uh, an antithesis to how contemporary art seems to value beauty. It's not necessarily something that is thought well of in the contemporary art world. But for me, I, I, I find that that's quite an interesting. It's like you can use humour to do things. I think you can use beauty as well. What's your most ambitious dream for your work? To keep practising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think in this day and age as an artist, trying to find space to work and to be able to keep making work uh, in terms of you know how our society is structured and the, the money that you need to do it, that that's going to be the hardest thing yeah. to accomplish. And what advice would you give to young female artists wishing to follow in your footsteps and become professional full-time artists? Group together, work like, you know, use your skills, use like, if you get into a groups of people, you can be much stronger and if you share your skills then you don't need the money to put something on, you can find an issue space somewhere, you can, you know, put something together on a shoestring, it's, it's possible if you work together. Uh, we have open studios coming up. Uh, between the 2nd and the 5th of June of 2016. Where can these lovely people find your studio? <laughs> it's in the Telegraph building, uh, so that's one of six buildings. Yes. Uh, top floor, um, right in the centre of the building. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. Thanks everyone for joining me, Adelaide Demire, for yet another edition of Art Success with this time the lovely Laura Hudson. If you would like to view her work, please do come down to Second Floor Studios for the Open Studios between the 2nd and the 5th of June of 2016. If you can't get down for that time, then please do contact Laura via her website, details below, to discuss a possible studio visit at a convenient time for you and for her. Send me your suggestions for artists who you would like to see me interview. It doesn't have to be at Second Floor Studios, but they do have to be practicing artists who are, are working full time. Thanks very much for watching and please don't hesitate to comment, rate and subscribe. Thank you.